My next guest this evening is an Emmy and Peabody award-winning director who's been making documentaries for the past 40 years. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Ken Burns. <laughs> Nice to see you again. Good to see you. We always learn so much about our own country from you, uh, Ken Burns. <laughs> and we, we do. We learn, we learn a lot about our nation, and I'm very grateful for the things I've learned about my nation. Not everything that we learn is, is, is a happy story about the United States. No, it is not. And, and your latest documentary is The U.S. and the Holocaust, which is a heartbreaking um, but fascinating film. What did you learn in making this film about the United States and our response to the Holocaust? Um, and um, yeah, it's um, we failed. That's the simple one, two word answer. You know, we think that we're separated by an ocean and a continent from what happened, and that we didn't know what was going on. We were interested in looking, and that's Sarah Botstein and Lynn Novick, my co-directors, we were interested in looking at what we knew when we knew it, what we did, what we didn't do, what we should have done. The United States, let's just make it clear, is not responsible for the Holocaust in any way. It's not complicit. However, we let in 225,000 immigrants, more than any other, I mean, refugees, more than any other sovereign nation, but we could have let in five times or 10 times as many, and we didn't. And the reason why we didn't is because America had been for a long time hugely anti-Semitic. It had been racist and anti-immigrant, xenophobic, nativist, whatever you want to call it, sound familiar. Um, we believed in eugenics, uh, mm -hmm. which was this pseudoscience that was attempting a hierarchy of races and ethnicities. Mm -hmm. There's only, Skull shape of there, stuff Exactly, like that. there's only one race, it's the human race. And so when we were faced in the 1930s and isolationism and a depression, which meant you didn't want somebody taking food off your table, we just didn't do what we could have done at, at every level, not just President Roosevelt, who often gets a lot of blame. He added more Jews to his administration than any previous president. His secretary of the Treasury, uh, Henry Morgenthau, was a Jew and a neighbor and a friend. But he knew what American sentiment was, and it was hugely anti-Semitic. So that's the context for the knowledge the United yes. States had about what was happening in Germany and, and Eastern Europe. What did we know? Uh, what's the earliest point at which we knew there was a quote-unquote final solution going on? Hitler takes um, office in January of 1933. We, there were 3,000 articles about the mistreatment of Jews just in 1933. We got the news pretty quickly. A lot of people in the State Department slow walked the news and wouldn't put it out, but others got out. So people just didn't believe it. It was treated as a war rumor. Or when they did it, they thought, well, maybe early on, maybe the Jews, you know, deserved it or they're responsible for their problems. And then when it got really bad, they said, oh, this is terrible, this is a horrible thing, but I can't believe it's a million people. By then it was three million or so. Or I still don't want to let anybody else in. And even after all the pictures came back from the liberated concentration camps, only 5% of Americans wanted to let in more refugees. And that's on us. We've, we failed in, in humanity's darkest moment to be what we had always claimed to be, this beacon of liberty, the, the home of immigrants, a nation of immigrants, which we are as well, but we are also equally drawn to the idea of demonizing immigrants and making them the other. Now, wh what did Hitler, he was interested in American history. Yes. <clears throat> what did he gl glean from our history that he saw as an example? You got any scotch? Um, <laughs> I do, actually. Yeah. I've got a lot of scotch. Right there, but I keep a bar back here. Back there, back there. Oh. Um, it's, it's, yeah. it's just, Stephen, it's bad. Um, he admired the way we had um, suppressed and murdered Native Americans and isolated them into cages. He called reservations that. He admired our 1924 Johnson Reed Immigration Act, which after having opened borders from the 1870s to 1920, where millions and millions of people came in, including millions of Jews, and New York City had one quarter of New York City's population was Jewish and more Jews than any other city on earth, 
they slammed the door. They said only those Nordic, uh, Protestant, white uh, countries could have a big Our quota. Our previous president just said, why not more people from Norway? Yeah. So, uh, you is know, there resonance from the, these lessons, unfortunately, to what is happening now? Because your story brings us up to the present. It doesn't end in the past. It do, you know, this is the first time that we felt, because we set the table with all the stuff we're talking about. Hitler admired that act. The German jurists came to the United States to study our, our Jim Crow laws uh, so that they could fashion in 1935 the anti-discriminatory laws against the Jews there. And when we protested as a nation, they looked at us and said, as the historian uh, Peter Hayes in our film says, Mississippi. Meaning, you treat these people as inferior, we think these people are inferior, so don't tell us how to conduct our business. This is the first film in which, you know, we talked, we've talked here about, Mark Twain said, history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. When we began this project in 2015 in a different kind of America, this, this rhymes all history. Every film I've made has rhymed in some ways. By the time we were finishing it, it was rhyming in every other sentence in a way that required us to have a dismount, and just impressionistic in the last uh, few minutes of the film, that brings us up through George Lincoln Rockwell, the American Nazi in the 60s, the, uh, the Dylan Ruff, who uh, you know, was anti-Jewish and anti-Catholic in addition to being anti-black, who murdered in Mother Emanuel in, in, in Charleston. Um, the, Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, Jews will not replace us. That was the original anxiety and, and the reason for closing the doors, the worry that we would be outbred and out by these foreigners, you know, even though our strength has been our immigrant How population. How does America rise above these nativist, dark, um, sometimes violent impulses. You tell stories about it. You bring out the facts. You bring it to light. You tell these stories as difficult as they may be, as uncomfortable as they may be. Yeah. Ken, thank you for telling those stories. The U.S. and the Holocaust is available now on PBS. Ken Burns, everybody. We'll be right back with a performance by Sudan Archive.